Welcome to Larry Talks Tech. If you have a WooCommerce e-commerce site and you want to upload a lot of products to it, this video should be of help. First, we will show you how to get your product images prepared and uploaded to your website's media library. Then, you will see how to prepare a spreadsheet of your product's data. Upload the product data to your site's database, which will link the product with their images. So let's start getting our images prepped. The first step in preparing your images is going to be to download the images from your vendor. You'll find out when you get them downloaded that for the most part they're pretty large. That means that they're going to be slower opening and taking up more space on your website server. So the images need to be resized and for us that sweet spot in the resizing is about 600 by 600 pixels. There are a number of programs out there that you can do that with. Uh, if you have Photoshop on one of your computers it works great. There is a image processor that you can do that with and it's slick. So it's under uh, file scripts image processor and I'll put that in the in the video notes. And of course the last thing you need to do is upload the images uh, to the website. And we've found that about 800 to 1000 images works pretty well for us but this is going to vary with you on, on what kind of upload speed you have and how fast the server is on the other end as, as it's getting the images. So I would start small with a couple hundred at a time and see how that goes and kind of work your way up. So let's see how that process goes. Let's take a look at it. Right, by this point you have your images downloaded and you've got them resized and now it's time to upload them to your WordPress site. So there are several different ways to do this. You can use uh, FTP, you can use uh, uh, cPanel and the file manager there. Um, both of those work but there's an intermediary step to get those images linked up to your images in WooCommerce. And if you do it this way, it, it pretty much happens automatically. So what's going to happen here is it will upload some images and later when, when uh, you upload your data spreadsheet, once that spreadsheet's in there in your, da in your database, uh, they, are, they are automatically linked up. So you don't, there's no intermediary step. You can punch out of a uh, uh, your admin panel on WordPress, uh, go directly to your site and all your images and da product data, everything will be there uh, ready to roll, ready for your customers. So this is pretty slick. So let me show you how this works. Uh, here you have, uh, this is WordPress right here and this is Finder. Um, I'm on a Mac. So you go over here to the sidebar, hit media and you're going to get a drop down box that says uh, uh, new media click that and you're going to get this box right here and then in over here on finder all you need to do let's let's upload a few guys here let's take uh, this one and we'll go down to here okay got them highlighted we just drag and drop them over here like this all right, and let's bring this up down here, and there they are. They're coming in right now. Okay, so that is it. That's all there is to it. So what we have in front of us is where I usually start the process at, is putting column headers into a blank spreadsheet. Now. If you've worked with databases before, relational databases like Access, um, it's not uncommon that we use tables to get on spreadsheets to get the information into the database. And that's essentially what we're doing here. And the key thing is the column labels. Uh, WooCommerce only accepts information under a specific label. And those labels are important because that's how it's set up in the database. Now there is a whole schema of these, several pages long. I'll put it in the uh, notes for the video. 
and it's this is where it gets a bit murky because WooCommerce also sells a plugin that you can upload product in and you'll often see that when you do a search you'll see the uh, database headings uh, the, these guys here you'll, you'll see these in, in the in the plugins uh, in that plugin for the search and uh, unfortunately they won't be exactly like these so they may or may not work if you try to upload your your information in so specifically the database uh, schema that uh, uh, I give you in the notes is the one that will work with these uh, and you don't you do not need a plug-in I've uploaded thousands of items of this and, and uh, uh, an additional plugin for this isn't, just isn't necessary so let's take a look at this sheet uh, here you got SKU name type of category it's in is it going to be published which means it's part of it has to do with visibility are you showing it uh, catalog visibility uh, a bit redundant but it does, it does have some meaning uh, is you might not want to show an item or show it or hide it and make it searchable still there's a number of different variables there is it going to be a featured item some templates have a pages or a portion of a page where the items featured so you, you can set that up here is stock status tax class will you accept back orders this is where you set your sales up uh, if it's available for sale, regular price, cost, net price, short description, height, and so on. Okay, so this this is the actual WooCommerce headings again that I use, showing you a more or less typical, if there is such a thing, vendor spreadsheet, and they will be different. As you see, the headers here are are different than the ones that I'm using. Uh, and they can be a lot different or they can kind of match up and it kind of depends on vendors vendors create a spreadsheet uh, also to send a to get their catalogs made there's other different things they use them for and you usually have to take what you get and here you're going to see some things that don't match so we're going to have to uh, make some uh, adjustments here to make sure that they'll add up and also here uh, these are all in feet for example and on our sheet we'll show you uh, WooCommerce likes to have those in inches all right so we'll show you we'll show you how, how we deal with that so basically the, uh, again when you get something from a vendor if you if, don't expect it to to just meld them perfectly with what you have that would be a perfect world and we're a long way from that in, in this part of the venture we have uh, two spreadsheets we're working with one with um, nothing but column headers on it and the other is a vendor spreadsheet so now I'm going to begin to put the two of them together and what I like to do is take items in the columns or columns themselves and just copy them over to this, this spreadsheet and here there's not many of them that I can use independently so I know that I'm going to have to add columns and do some different things so I'm just doing this is just kind of a well a quick way to uh, get some of the columns filled um, and normally what I do is just copy the whole column so if you're if you're dealing with a thousand uh, or so SKUs over here you know if you're going to go you're going to go this and then go go down here and uh, at the end of a thousand and copy that you know you're scrolling down forever uh, to me the real quickest way to do it is just to take uh, uh, from this spreadsheet click it like this copy it and then go over and paste it in the appropriate column on my empty spreadsheet and if it has a different name when I get done I'll just go ahead and, and just retype the name over again. That's a lot easier than scrolling down to, uh, like the one I had last week was like 1,980 or so lines. It's a lot easier than doing all that scrolling down. Scrolling down. It's, it just makes it a lot faster. So here, here I've, I've, I've put SKUs in. I've put in uh, 
the, the names of the items. I mean, I've got some prices in here, and that's just about all I put into. So now we're going to have to start filling in the columns. So let's take a look at what's happened here. So here I've adjusted the SKUs. Well, why would I do that? Um, the biggest thing uh, for me is that with a website where I've got a large number of vendors and uh, a large number of SKUs, and, and most company SKUs aren't too critical. I mean, these are like 1,001. I just made these up, but actually they're pretty simplistic. It, it would be one easy to have some duplication of SKUs, which is not, not a good thing in, in what we're doing. So you don't need duplication of SKUs for one. The other is I want it easy for me to be able to tell who the vendor is. So if I'm talking to someone over the phone, I've got the website here in front of me, I, I, I know where that item came from. And sometimes where it came from t tells me a little bit more about the background that I need to give the customer or additional information or it makes my job of looking at prices and do some things a lot easier. So what I've done here, I just made up a prefix, uh, L-T-T-A-L, -T -T so my company's name would be Alpha, so uh, who I bought this from, you know, hypothetically. And so AL was them, and then LTT is, of course, Larry Talks Tech. So this, this I know that I, with this, I know that I've doctored that, that SKU. And with this, I know who the company is. So how I did that is something that I use a lot, the concatenate. And so here is the formula up here. Uh, circle that a little bit. Okay, up here. And see this it's just equal concatenate and then it's b2 and a2 so b2 a2 so here's your b2 is a suffix or prefix whether it's just going right here and it's going to a2 all right so that's how those go together so i've got an item here that i'm going to put on sale whoops so these these oh we'll, we'll get to this in just a second let's go about the sale items here so this is the date format. So this sale goes on from 728-2020 to, that's not a very long sale, 728-2020. <laughs> so you would, you would have uh, in here whatever the official ending date is and the starting date. And it goes right down to the second. So usually when I set these up, I'd, I'd have this thing uh, 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 going to, midnight or something so it'd be like zero 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 one it would start and it would end at mid at midnight on this particular day which would be zero zero and then uh, uh, zero one again uh, so that's that's how I would set that up and then you have your sale price here and your regular price okay so if we go back here uh, we didn't, certainly we didn't change the name of the item, although I think it said description, so I think this says name here. This is a, the appropriate name for that. Categories, I'm not going to go into how to set up categories in, in WooCommerce. There's plenty of, of instructions for that. It's kind of beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. But here are two separate categories for this item. Uh, and one is accessories and the other is Gregorian chants. So th this is how you show them. So when you upload your product, this product will end up going in both categories. And it's good. So you, sometimes you have products that overlap. Most of the time you have products that overlap in, in what we do. So the same product could show up two or three times in your website. Uh, here is showing a category another main category and this is how you put subcategories in so if you had up here say accessories and then then Gregorian chance is a category then you'd put a the little greater than sign here and then you might have a subcategory of, of music or uh, uh, music from Italy okay so so that would be the subcategories that would go there and then it would show up here here and here and then and then the subcategories okay some of these these things that I'm using here I'll leave it to the 
schema when you look up it tells you exactly what these do and, and just save us some time but it tells you exactly what these guys guys do here all right so here is where it gets a little tricky uh, WooCommerce gives you a short description and a long description okay the, the difference of course is what you put in them and the other difference is uh, where they come at on your spreadsheet the short description will come before the fold so that's a newspaper term right so if you have a, a newspaper when they lay out flat you don't know they're halved okay and what this is uh, is on the screen so so you won't the long description you have to scroll down past the, the bottom part here this is the bottom part of the fold You'd have to scroll scroll down to see it. So this is the one that's up on the top of the screen. And the other description over here. This is the long description that's down toward the bottom. Okay, now in my particular theme that I use on the WooCommerce site, down here where this one shows up is also uh, dimensions and some, some of the specifics of the uh, product itself. So I put those kind of specifics down in a long description and the general what you would call if you will a romance description. I have that up here on the top. But the real problem with it for us is how, how did I get this all together to make sentences when they had them in three different columns. Okay. So it's kind of like concatenate only different. <laughs> all right, so here's what this is. So you got these guys here and to get them together, here's a short description. I, I use a, a formula that's a, it's a text join. And the critical pieces here for this discussion uh, comes in this first piece where the quotes are. Uh, in there you can put things like commas, periods, if, if there was no period after the end of these and they just spaced them off which sometimes that happens uh, then you can fix that remember you're dealing with thousands of items so you don't want to have to go in and individually have to edit you know uh, items that you've put on there you want you want one time to get this done if you're trying to edit issues singularly with several thousand of items unless you have you, that's going to take well a lot a long time <laughs> a very long time uh, and more patience than I've got. So, so uh, uh, the, the quotes are there for to give you spaces, commas, things like that. Here I didn't need any. I just need spaces. So when I copy the, when these things become melded in together, uh, you need to have a space between the end of the period. So that's all I did here. So that's quotation, space, quotation. Then over here is just the range of things that you're bringing in. So columns S, U, and S3 was the range of the ones that I brought in here. So here's, there you go. So it's these columns here were, were brought over. All right. So that's how those got together. And then for the long description, it was exactly the, I get over here, exactly the same type of format, only the, obviously the columns were different. So text join is, is uh, pretty fast. If you've got multiple columns, it's, it's great. Uh, and just to aside, if you haven't worked with these before, WooCommerce could care less about this. I usually clean these up before I do the upload, but WooCommerce will see as you as you upload these things. Old SKU, it'll tell you, oh, not going to take that. Prefix, not going to take that. SKU, I like that. That's coming. You know, so it'll tell you. So so uh, uh, you know, don't worry about leaving that stuff on there. I just take, I would take all, delete all this stuff off because I may go back and use the same for reference. I don't need all this stuff uh, confusing me. <laughs> you know, a year from now, I want to be able to come back to this thing and know exactly what's going on. So I, I'd knock all this stuff off of here before I upload it. But So there you go. So if you're into WooCommerce, what's inches? Of course, you just take and multiply these times the feet times 12, and then, and then you get your, your inches in here. And so this is that's really no big issue. Now the last tricky bit is images. Uh, images could almost be a whole post by itself here in, in the vlogging category. Uh, 
again, there's not consistency between vendors how they do these things. Uh, and I don't know that there could be. So, I mean, they, they've got diff they have different needs than what I have. So, uh, what I end up doing is doing some concatenating here. Typically, as I look at, at the images that I'm uploading, I'm trying to see what kind of pattern they're using when they're using multiple images for a product. So that pattern could be 1001-A, uh, 1001-B, 1001-C. Sometimes it's 1001 uh, underscore hero, and then the second image uh, would be 1001 uh, underscore right, which is a right view of the item, and then the third image might be 1001 underscore left, or so on. So. I take a look at that pattern and then I don't worry some images might have three items for it some might have five some might only have one I don't really care I'm, uh, uh, again I'm dealing with thousands of images here so I'll, I'll take the skew copy it over and uh, then take the image or rather the image type and attach it to the skew. Now this does not need to have my prefix on it. Okay, I'm looking over here at the, at the C column, so I don't want to confuse you here. So all I did to get to this um, area here was was put the skew, this the unaltered skew, which is uh, it over here real quick this one okay and then I combined it with this two and then the JPEG and came up with this okay or over here came up with this and that that's how these things got put together but I the theory behind this is then I would take and just run all these down to uh, in numerical order how how they would have done their images most the images do have something about the skew, thank God, in there. And I know that I'm going to use three three images. This guy, the, the hero image or the main image, uh, doesn't have any numbers on it at all, like dash one. The other ones have a dash two and dash three. And I know that there's some of these items won't have a two or a three, or may only have a three, and not have a two. And, and I'm still going to put this in here. So they're all going to look like this all the way down. That's my point. When I upload them, I'll let WooCommerce decide if, if if it doesn't see this, it won't put it in there. Okay, so it's not going to go in the database because there's nothing there to put in. It has nothing to relate it to. It'll come up in a summary report after the upload. It'll tell me 1002-2 uh, did, did not have any any image. All right, that's okay. I know that. But it's easier to, to let them do that than have me go through... 2,000 lines and try to pick out which which ones are you know going to go up and which ones aren't so I hope what I said <laughs> said makes sense but uh, uh, then then all you all you're doing here is just just copying this down so if you have any any questions about images please put them in the comments here and I'll get back to you and, and uh, square this out but it, this saves me a ton of time and then you're just doing the text join once you have all this stuff set up like this in these three columns uh, you go back and do the text join. So now this comma separates each image and is telling WooCommerce that these we we have these images on file. So you go ahead and, and, and connect them with the product data in the database. All right? and, and if there's anything missing here, WooCommerce will go, oh, okay, don't have it. No big deal. All right, and that's how that works. And then you have all your images uh, uh, done. All right. So at the end of this, what I would do would be immediately save this as a uh, different format. All right, because I now have numbers and all this sort of stuff in here and formulas in here and WooCommerce is not liking that. So it's got to be in a text format. So we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now we 
have our spreadsheet here with all of our columns and we're all we've got numerical things and different sort of formats here and, and we've got formulas in there and, and once again as we said our our friend WooCommerce is only going to take this as text and here's probably the quickest way to do that take your spreadsheet go file for us we'll do save as and let's just save it into you probably wouldn't do this but for the sake of our discussion we'll save this to the download folder and we'll just call this uh, test one okay and whether you're using Excel or, or one of the open office uh, variants uh, you'll see a window down here and you'll this is pretty common text CSV click that and then that's going to get that to a text format. You hit save. And of course, uh, LibreOffice wants me to, to use their format, and, and uh, I don't need to do that, so I use, to use text. The Unicode, field delimiters, everything, just leave all of this alone. Everything is fine. This is pretty much standard. And then you hit OK. All right. OK, now that's done. And that's all there is to it. And now it's ready for. Uh, WooCommerce or if you want to you can delete some of these columns off here that that you do not need and then uh, get it ready for the upload so we'll show you how to upload it here in in a moment okay I'm on the WooCommerce site now and I want to apologize there are uh, this is my commercial site and there's a lot of things here I didn't really don't want the whole world to to see so I've had to cut some of the um, windows off so but this is the critical one and how you how you get to here is uh, click WooCommerce click on products click on all products and uh, at the top left corner of that window you'll see where it says import or export but you want to import you click import that brings you up this window and this window I've already gone here and it says choose the CSV fi file for your upload and I have chosen test one CSV which which we did uh, just a few seconds ago and this is a spreadsheet that we've been working on and I'm going to stop here before I hit continue this one on new product that you're uploading you, you don't have to do this at all but shortly I'll be showing you how to do uh, price changes and updating your files and you do need to click this on a for existing products so it'll focus only on those products and it will uh, take a look at the ID or SKU and update only the ones that that you suggest so this is a handy little guy so never forget to use that when you're doing updates all right so our next thing here is that we'll click continue said so there we go this may take it take a second if it's too many seconds I'll speed it up in the edit but oh no it's here okay so I didn't erase any of those uh, columns that, that did not import so here you see what it does it says do not import it's not going to go in so but it is really this is how uh, technically you're mapping your columns basically but this is showing the things that it's going to take and it, if I didn't fill anything out it doesn't put anything otherwise it puts a sample of what's correct in there which I did do and if you drop down on any of these it kind of gives you the whole list of ones that they're willing to accept alright so that's pretty the, the, much like the schema that, that I'm going to put into notes where you can go get to three pages worth of stuff and some explanations for it. okay so that's that feed it doesn't like right <laughs> so so it's pretty happy with inches though so inches are right here uh, and you get down to here you run the importer all right so I'm not going to do that because otherwise I'll, I'll import this stuff into the site but you run the importer and then uh, it actually goes goes right up here and you'll see uh, a, a next window will have this and a bar graph and it'll show you the progress that it's doing for the upload 
and that is it then your products are there once that's done it'll give you an error report of some items and sometimes the the jpegs from the vendors they don't always catch um, and you can go ahead and try them again if you want um, but I, that's one of the reasons I use multiple JPEGs. So, so if there's a failure on one, there's there's several others there. And how many uh, images that you can use uh, really depends on your template. So I like I usually use three or four. I, uh, sometimes your templates, uh, some templates are let you run five or six or so on. So uh, in any event, uh, this will go go through. And I hope this will pick up. It shows the import and tells you when you're done gives you the error report and then you can immediately click right out of this don't forget to do well not immediately if you're using a cache uh, on there like a, a WP fastest cache or, or uh, W3 total cache or whatever cache you have clear your cache and also clear the cache for your browser because uh, sometimes your new items won't show up because because they're still feeding information from the cache. So clear your caches and then uh, punch out of this. Go to your uh, uh, website as a customer and your, your new product should be there. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful. Well, it's great having all these items on your site, but it's also uh, could be a bit tricky to maintain them. Imagine uh, in retail in retail stores where I've worked in, we'd have you know every few weeks four or five thousand different items we're changing prices on. Uh, online, fortunately, it's a lot simpler than that. And uh, here is an example of how price changes actually work. Remember a, a website is a at its core is basically a database with a graphic user interface on it and your SKU uh, becomes your key in in your database so everything relates to SKUs and with that as long, long as everything lines up here all you have to do for a price change these are the new prices that go in and these are the three items that are going to have their prices changed. So you would just put these in here and upload this into the site and prices are changed. Now on this next, matter of fact, you could do both of these at the same time if the need brought itself about. But just say hypothetically you don't see this right now. If you want to add a, uh, some items that say, you know, you have all different types of vendors. Some are huge corporate conglomerates and some are a guy and his Uncle Fred working out of the garage and the guy and Uncle Fred working out of the garage isn't going to have these items ready for a, a long time. Uh, he's sold through and he has to make a bunch more. You're talking six months from now and you don't want to keep having them on the, on the site because people are going to be trying to buy them and you're going to tell them, no, I don't have them. And even if you have zero stock on hand, they'll call you. Has any of those came in? So, so anyway, the easiest way to do that is just to hide them. Say hidden. So in catalog visibility, you, you can say hidden. And then when Uncle Fred and the guy works in his garage uh, and gets those things back going again, you, you just go back and upload these as visible and bang, they're right back on the site again. Now, this one would let you hide them, but also uh, let you search for them. And there might be reasons why you, someone might want to do that. Uh, it could be that you're just finding, want to have some information about the item. They're curious. So, you know, they could use this and search for the item on your site and it would come up where here it would not come up at all they use, they use this skew this item's not going anywhere so no one's going to see it so that's a little bit of a way to update your your items there are, are a few tricky things with maintaining a woocommerce site and uh, one is to me i've not found a satisfactory way of bulk deleting product. I know there's some plugins out there and I'm, um, I'm to say I've looked at them. I'm not comfortable, at least, at least for my usage, if that works out well. But but uh, uh, so mostly I'm hiding a lot of stuff. Uh, 
images are the same way. Images are very tricky because it, it doesn't allow you to update an image. So there are some things that I wish WooCommerce would give us more flexibility on. But that's anyway, that's a, at the time I say this, and as far as I know, neither of those things are, are, are pluses. But beyond that, it's uh, pretty rock solid in terms of, of uh, certainly what we've used it for. In any event, that's how, you, that's how you do some maintenance on the items. I hope that, that was, was helpful. There's one more thing I want to mention. Uh, WooCommerce has a problem, or has had problems, with interpreting numbers with commas in them. An example would be on your spreadsheet you have put something that's a thousand dollars and uploaded it and it, you've had a comma in there. When WooCommerce interprets it, it interprets it as like a dollar. That's not good. So, so uh, the workaround for this is, is fairly simple. When you do your format uh, for your cells, uh, you'll see a place there uh, uh, where there's a box typically you check to turn the commas on or off and you just want to turn them off so when you enter a thousand dollars on your spreadsheet it'll just it'd be a one and three zeros not to worry when you upload it WooCommerce will put the comma back in now, this problem may have been fixed uh, a couple of versions ago I just uh, uh, don't want to have to reload a bunch of stuff if it hasn't been fixed so I, I just by autopilot I just take the commas off when I format and then I don't have a problem. So I share that with you. All right. The last thing I want to say is the things that I've shown you here are things that uh, I have worked for me and, and the processes that I've, I use and I've refined and, and made them as effective as I could. But that doesn't mean that they're the best out there. So some of you have done this longer than me or have a different approach. And if you see anything that we've uh, shown here today that uh, uh, is an improvement or another angle or another way to do this, please share it in our comments section so we can share it with everybody. You know, I don't claim to be the, the a, a guru on this. I'm just, uh, again, I'm just working from my own experience, probably pretty much like most of you have. So if you see anything different here or, or something that uh, you think, hey, you know, you might try this, please let me know and uh, put it in the comments section. And also, if you have any questions or wasn't clear on something, do that too, and I'll do my best to help you out. All right. Well, that, that wraps this up, as they say. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to us if you want to. We'd, we'd sure like to have you uh, checking our videos as they come out. And uh, thanks for stopping by Larry Talks Tech. You all take care.